This is Five on Your Side at Five, focused on you. Community is remembering a fire captain who died while on duty. Today, there was a funeral and procession for Captain James Kova. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Kelly Jackson. And I'm Mike Bush. He was a 20-year veteran of the fire department. He passed away last week. Our Laura Barcheski was there for the procession today, and she joins us now live from Afton. Laura. Hundreds of family members and first responders showed up for Captain James Kova today, just as he showed up every single day for all of them. This is the last alarm assignment for Afton Fire Protection District Captain Jim Kova. Captain Kova answered his last alarm on July 9th, 2024, at the age of 54. Captain James Kova was a devoted father, husband, and lastly, firefighter. He's one of my uh, go-to guys. He was always willing to uh, help me and help the fire district with whatever he, uh, whatever he could and whatever was asked of him. His fellow firefighters say he was the calm in the storm, loved to laugh, loved Bucky's, yes, the one you're thinking of, and cared deeply for his community, both at home and at work. His love and compassion and knowledge for the job are going to be truly missed. Uh, he is a role model that we all should aspire to be. Captain Kova was escorted down Gravoy by dozens of first responders from across the state to his final resting place in Afton. People from the community lined the streets to pay their respects. It just shows what we do as a community to come together, no matter what part of the city or Missouri you're from. Everybody pulls together for our, our heroes, for our fallen heroes. Marion Chilton says she was heartbroken to hear about the loss of Captain Kova. She says she owes her life to the Afton Fire Protection District. I am so appreciative of all the work that uh, the fire service and the police departments do. Ten years ago, I was dying of pneumonia. And if it wasn't for the Afton Fire Department and paramedics getting me to the hospital in time, I might have not made it. The ringing of the bell started their shift, and Thursday it rang one last time for Jim. He will be missed. Time out, 1336. Captain Kovo was a firefighter for 28 years. His family and his community says he will never be forgotten. Reporting live in Afton, Laura Barcheski, five on your side. And tonight we're learning more about two young men who died in an Illinois crash. It happened Saturday night on Highway 15 in Cahokia Heights. The victims have been identified as Tegan Kelly and Ashton Jackson. Police say Kelly crashed into another car, went off the road, and hit a light pole. They were on their way to a Cardinals game. Family tells us the two had been best friends since kindergarten, growing up in the Shiloh and Belleville areas. This is probably... One of the worst things a parent can go through to get the call that your child has been taken to the hospital and the uncertainty of not knowing what has happened. And the families will be holding their funeral services together. They say that's exactly how the two friends would have wanted it. Months after a video of two St. Louis County teenagers fighting went viral, we have learned the case has been resolved. 15-year-old Marnice DeClue recently admitted to assaulting her Hazelwood East classmate, Kaylee Gain. Justina Coronel is here with the latest on this. Justina. Just a few hours ago, I spoke to Marnice DeClue's attorney, Greg Smith, who said this case was resolved almost a month ago. And we're just learning about this now because he wanted to give his client some time to settle in at home after being confined in the detention facility for more than three months. He wanted her to spend some time with her parents after the fight near Hazelwood East garnered national attention. Smith said through negotiations, the courts lowered her first degree assault charge to second degree assault. And DeClue took responsibility. Smith explains this means she actually acted under the influence of sudden passion rather than knowingly causing serious physical injury. 16-year-old Kaylee Gain spent a month in the hospital followed by two weeks in a rehab center. She is still undergoing physical and mental health therapy when the clue is under court supervision. Her attorney said she has to check in every two weeks with a judge. She has certain conditions that she has to meet counseling. She has a, a youth mentor. Um, she has community service that she has to complete. 
He believes she might be under supervision for another six months to a year. Now, I reached multiple times to Kaylee Gaines' attorney for an interview or comment. We still haven't heard back. Christina. In just a few hours, former President Trump will speak at the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee. Mr. Trump has said his speech will call for unity after the attempt on his life less than a week ago. Our political editor, Mark Maxwell, reports from outside the convention center tonight. Mark. Mike and Kelly, good evening from Milwaukee. The crowds are filing in. The stage is set. Kid Rock just completed his mic check. We were inside the Fiserv Forum uh, watching in the convention hall as that choreography centered around the image of Donald Trump raising his fist in the air in defiance and survival after that near assassination attempt on Saturday. That is the image that will last tonight. That's what Republicans are focusing on. It's become something of a Republican rallying cry about Trump defying the odds. The reality TV star who dabbled in WWE entertainment, the celebrity showman who showed that command and stage presence under pressure in Pennsylvania, the same brash politician who waged grievance campaigns against Congress, the courts, corporations, and celebrities alike, now the insurgent who has hammered every living Republican presidential nominee before him, prepares to take the stage tonight and take that room into a new era of the Republican Party now made in his image. Standing up and yelling, fight, 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 uh, after uh, getting shot, it's a pretty, pretty remarkable recovery time, I think. It's a tough guy. It takes a tough guy to do something like that. Trump will share the stage tonight with other hype men, the front men taking the stage before him, including Tucker Carlson, the head of the UFC, Dana White, and the WWE pro wrestling celebrity Hulk Hogan. The theme there, obvious, tough guy politics on tap in Milwaukee. And all of this coming as people close to President Biden see him at his most vulnerable, at his weakest, setting up a dramatic four-week march toward the Democratic National Convention in Chicago this same time next month. But again, President Trump making his first remarks since that assassination attempt, his first big speech in just a few hours. We'll bring it to you live on the air and have immediate reaction from inside just after tonight at 10 o'clock. Live in Milwaukee, Mark Maxwell five on your side. And as Mark just mentioned, coverage of the RNC continues tonight here on five on your side. Watch as former President Trump accepts his nomination for the third time. That's in about three hours at 8 p.m. And Mark will also report from the Democratic National Convention August 19th through the 22nd in Chicago. Protest over an Illinois deputy accused of murdering a black woman who called 911 for help. The criminal record he has in our area. President Biden is fighting COVID tonight. How his campaign is responding to the latest pressure from Democrats to drop out of the race. The goal to win gold. Tonight we hear from Team USA's women's basketball team about the fight to stay on top. Just days ago, we're talking about lows around 80 degrees, and that was what our high was today. As they creep lower, how low can we go and how long can we hold on to these temperatures in July? We'll track our next rain chance as well.